Hey, what's up guys? Now, all-in-one PCs or pre-built PCs have always been something quite intimidating, not just for myself, and in fact, for most consumers out there today. And this sort of drives everyone from the all-in-one scene to the entire DIY scene because you get more personalization. And I guess it's not just about personalization. Uh, most of the time, all-in-one PCs have always been perceived as being quite overpriced or a bit steep and their hardwares are most often quite under spec and not up to date with its current generation of hardwares. Speaking about all-in-one PCs, today I have the MSI Aegis X and it is in fact my first all-in-one PC and I'm sort of looking forward to review it because I guess the last time I saw an all-in-one PC, I never actually thought it could look this good. Look, first and foremost, the Aegis X is one hell of a sleek all-in-one PC. It's tiny, and I must say that pre-built PCs or all-in-ones have gotten a lot better in terms of aesthetics. The Aegis X is more pointy rather than curvy, and you get this nice aerodynamic look which really adds on to its overall aesthetics. But wait a minute, what about ventilation? Because ultimately, heat, as we all know, could affect the entire performance of a PC. For ventilation, you do get some vents on the top of the case on the left side where the GPU is, well, left or right is sort of depends on where you're looking at from, and of course ventilation is all good on the front panel where I believe most of the cool air would come from, and finally some ventilation slightly between the power supply unit, which is a small form factor one, and the I.O. ports. The front panel also comes with two USB 3.0 ports, a single USB-C port, which is great, and your typical audio jacks and of course, your power button. Now for those of you who are still a bit old school, here's a CD drive made just for you. And you also have that massive MSI badge that you definitely wouldn't miss, but this isn't a power button at all. It functions as an overclock button, so instead of getting onto the BIOS and manually overclocking your CPU, it automatically loads up a pre-configured profile so you get a little bit more power out of your processor and your GPU. For some good VR fun, the Aegis X comes with a HDMI port right on the front of the case which makes the Aegis definitely VR ready. So if you're the type of person who still craves RGB, then you do get some of it on the front panel which you can actually change them via the native MSI software which is pre-installed in the Aegis X. The Aegis X is obviously a small form factor PC and would definitely take very little space on your desk. Being small doesn't necessarily mean being mediocre. The inside of the Aegis X holds a 6700K processor, which is an i7 processor, but it's about two generations old, but still very much more than usable, especially for gaming. The processor is being cooled by a 100ml all-in-one cooler, but based on some temps on max load, the MSI branded all-in-one cooler isn't too bad at all. I do, however, like to point out that if you were to use the Game Boost feature, there are certain drawbacks since the Game Boost feature overclocks both your GPU and CPU at the same time, hence resulting into more heat in such a small case with limited amount of fans. Now this is where I think it would be advisable for you to manually overclock your CPU via your BIOS so that you could also tweak the core voltage a little to lower down the temps at an optimal level. This specific model of the Aegis X comes with a full-size MSI GPU and to be more specific, the Gaming X 6GB GTX 1060. A full-size card means that it will take up a dual PCIe slot with the standard full-size GPU dimensions. Holding a tier 1 GPU title does actually add on to the overall value of any all-in-one PC, and in this case, the Aegis X. This specific model of the Aegis X comes with a 16GB of DDR4M, an ITX motherboard, and a 120GB PCIe NVMe SSD, which is awesome for load times. And of course, for storage, a 1TB hard drive, which is actually a WD Blue. You can of course add on an additional hard drive for additional storage, and if you'd like, you could also go for an additional SSD with the readily available slot. For seamless internet connectivity, the motherboard does also come with wireless features pre-built so you don't have to deal with those messy ethernet cables. So what if I were to sweeten up the deal a little bit and have an MSI branded monitor as well? 
Here's the MSI Optics G27C2. It's an MSI branded gaming monitor that curves its way up to 27 inches. It's full HD, but that really isn't a bad thing at all, especially for a gaming monitor. The Optics comes with a VA panel which makes gaming and even editing work much more pleasurable compared to a TN panel. While this really isn't a monitor review, I'm just going to be quite brief with the specs. The Optics comes with a 144Hz refresh rate which makes it super ideal for gaming and of course a 1ms response time. Even the OSD buttons are fairly straightforward and foolproof. So since Player Unknown Battlegrounds, it's like the in thing right now. I ran a couple of games on PUBG, and to be honest, gaming had zero issues at all with very minimal ghostings. And of course, adaptation to this monitor is almost instant. Now, bear in mind though, this is coming from a guy who games on 1440p monitors at 165Hz with an IPS panel. Well, like I said earlier, while I'm not really a fan of curved monitors, I'd like to see a 1440p resolution and G-Sync instead of FreeSync on a 27-inch monitor in the near future from MSI. And I'd like to think that they probably have that in the works right now, and I'm really looking forward to that. So input-wise, the monitor comes with a single HDMI, a display port, and of course, a DVI port. So aesthetics-wise, the G27C2 retains its sleek appearances with a nice hint of red around the edges, which would definitely match the Aegis X, and a reasonably thin bezel around the screen edges. Unfortunately, with the G27C2, you can't actually adjust or tilt the monitor much. So in summary of both the Aegis X and the G27C2, well, I'd like to honestly give an opinion about the Aegis X specifically. While some may argue that perhaps the price point is a little bit more steep for a PC with such specs, I might beg to differ simply because what MSI is actually offering is much more of a solution for consumers or customers who prefer peace of mind when buying a PC. You do pay a little bit more, but you do get much better integration and in all honesty, I think the case does look pretty damn good. What do you think about an all-in-one PC guys, or even a pre-built one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. So the MSI Aegis X retails at about 8,230 ringgit. So yeah, it's about 8,230. And while I, again, like I said in the video, some may perceive it as being quite steep, but I strongly believe that there are target customers for the Aegis X. Uh, while I think there are a couple of flaws, a fair bit of flaws with the Aegis X, especially airflow and its overclocking profiles and stuff, I guess this is something that MSI should start working on and use the Aegis X as a baseline. Speaking about the monitor, the G G27C2, it's being priced at about 2,200-ish ringgit. And for its specs, I think it's quite worth it. Uh, it's a good attempt for MSI to sort of penetrate into the whole competitive high refresh rate monitor gaming scene. And I guess that's pretty cool. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And of course, give a big thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe if you have not. I guess this is the time where I say I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.